Okay, let's take a look at this problem now, number 10 in topic set 5. We were asked first to write the chemical equation, and the second point is we are asked to calculate how much hydrogen cyanide is made when we have 20 liters of each of the reactants being mixed at the same temperature pressure. Um, so let's get started with just writing the reaction. So the reaction includes methane, which is CH4 gas, ammonia, which is NH3 gas, and then oxygen. And all of these made HCN gas and then water gas. So what we have to do is balance this out. So that's the balance equation. Now what we need to do is then calculate how much hydrogen cyanide is produced here. Now you might not be able to calculate this if you're just thinking about doing stoichiometry with number of moles because what you're given is just 20 liters of each of these guys. If you just think about the ideal gas equation PV equals nRT, if you want to calculate number of moles, you're going to have to have not just volume but you have to have your pressure and you have to have your temperature. And here they don't give you values for those. Now what a lot of students do at this point is they just plug in numbers for pressure and temperature and then they would use that to make actual calculations but of course that's an assumption and you always have to be careful when you're making this assumption that maybe that's not the pressure or temperature that you're using so the key is to understand that what they're saying here is that reaction is run at the same temperature and pressure which means at the start of the reaction you have some pressure temperature at the end of the reaction you have the same pressure and temperature so pressure and temperature are constant so if pressure and temperature are constant, our ideal gas equation, which can be written this way, where you have beginning of the reaction, let's call that condition one and end of reaction condition two. P1, that means is equal to P2, so we can cancel that out, and T1 is equal to T2. So what we end up getting is V1 over N1 equals to V2 over N2. Hopefully this relationship rings a bell to you because this is what our Avogadro's law is. And more importantly, what we can do when we write this relationship is we can rearrange it so it looks like this. And the reason this is important is because on the right side here, what we have is mole ratio of gases, which of course is the same as the stoichiometric ratio, which is the ratio you get from your coefficient in your reaction equation. Now what this relationship here tells us is that that mole ratio also can be expressed as volume ratio. Those same coefficients now also stands for volume in addition to standing for number of moles as we usually use them. And so that makes life really easy because if I want to figure out how much HCN I have, all I need to do is first figure out which of these three guys is my limiting reactant. And then afterwards, I'm going to use the limiting reactant to calculate the product that I have. So let's start by figuring out the limiting reactant. Remember what we used to do with number of moles is we would take the number of moles and we would divide it by the coefficient. We can do the same thing here. So what we'll do is instead of number of moles, we'll use volume. So we'll start with volume of methane and that's 20 liter. And we're going to divide it by the coefficient. The coefficient of methane is two. So what that means is that you need two liters of methane per reaction. So that means you can get 10 reactions if you use up all your methane. You do the same calculation with ammonia, also 20 liter, also coefficient of two so that's also 10 reaction oxygen 20 liters but coefficient of three so we get 6.7 reaction. Since that's the one that gives us the least number of reactions, that's our limiting reactant. Once we know our limiting reactant, we can use that to calculate the product that we're looking for, HCN. And to do that, we'll just say the following, 20 liters of oxygen multiply by the, instead of mole to mole ratio, now it's going to be the volume to volume ratio of oxygen to HCN. And oxygen is three, HCN is two in our original balance equation. So that tells us now that our end product is going to be 13.3 liters of HCN. Okay.